Photo editing for beginners. Four simple steps to improve your photos with editing. So you love taking photos, but editing is where everything just turns into this raging dumpster fire. You feel overwhelmed by all the choices. Do you do too much? How much is too much? Do you need to know how to do all these things? Like you've heard of frequency separation. Do you need to buy all the different plugins? There are a billion options out there. How do you know what's even right for you and what you should be doing to your photos? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you in this video by giving you four easy tips, my game plan, if you will, on how I approach every single photo that I edit. And it is absolutely going to change the game for you. And the fourth one, probably the biggest stress reducer of any of the things that I could teach you here in this video. So you're not gonna wanna check out early. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California, and I am entirely self-taught. Like I never went to school for any of this. I just figured things out as I went. I watched YouTube videos and I read books and I just did trial and error to figure out how I wanted my own images to look and what my clients really responded well to. And I've got a really good system because I didn't want to spend a ton of time editing my work. I really don't care for editing. It's not my favorite part by any stretch. So if I can edit more images faster and have them still look great, that is a win for me 1000%. So I'm gonna share with you my four step plan for editing photos and it is going to simplify the process for you and make it super easy. Firstly, crop. Second is color. Three is correct. And four, I'm gonna make you wait till the end because it's ridiculously simple and it is gonna save you so much stress. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so if you've watched my videos on one light four ways or two light four ways, you might recognize this photo from the shoot. I'm gonna go through and edit this image for you using my four step framework. Um, really the fourth step should be the first one, but let's assume that one's already done and we're gonna get into these. So this is straight out of camera. You can see it's a .nef file. This is a raw file from my Nikon camera. So I have not touched anything here except the crop. And I'm gonna show you why I, I did that a second ago. So firstly, step number one is the crop. We need to make sure the horizon lines are level and we have an appropriate amount of space around the subject. So she's not too cramped up here or too far up against an edge. Now I shot this, uh, dare I say, perfectly in the beginning. So I didn't have to do any of that cropping, but one of the ways you can check, at least here in Lightroom, if you hit the key R to do the crop or you click the little crop button right here, you can grab this angle tool uh, which is a, a bubble level, draw a line across a straight horizon, and it will automatically make that horizontal for you. That will make it level, which is pretty cool. So now the image is perfectly level according to the bottom of my backdrop, which is level with the floor. That is what I want. So that is one trick that you can do. Uh, but again, if there's too much space on one side or another, you know, if, if you start with the image over here, then I'm gonna wanna bring in the other side to fill in that space so it doesn't look like she's skewed off to one side or the other, but let's just bring that back. Here we go. So cropping is always where I start because if the image doesn't, I, I wanna know everything that's going to be in the image when I actually start editing. Because let's say there's some detail up in the corner here and here that I want to get rid of, but after I crop it, those things aren't even in the frame anyway. That was just a big waste of time. So I always start with my crops, whether I'm doing a boudoir session, you know, seniors, fashion, whatever it may be, get everything level, everything framed up properly, and then I can actually edit. Okay, so step number two is the color. This gets pretty easy to do when you start shooting consistently in the studio or outdoors or, or wherever you are. When you shoot the same way every single time, it eliminates the step of trying to calibrate your, 
your images to daylight or whatever you want your, your color values to be. So because my lights are daylight balanced, I know that this is true to color. But if I wanted to warm it up a little bit, I could boost the color temperature and just warm it. Again, there is definitely a too much. I don't want her to look like she fell asleep in the tanning bed. This isn't golden hour inside of the studio. It just looks off. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to cool it down too much because cooling down the skin makes them look like corpses, which if you're doing a horror spooky shoot, I am all about that. But if they're alive, you probably want to keep them a little warm and maybe just boost a little bit there to give her, again, just, just a touch of warmth. It's entirely up to you. It is a style preference. For my boudoir editing, I desaturate everything by 85% anyway. So skin tone like that makes zero difference for what I do. So knowing the end result will help you get to that point. And by just playing with things along the way, you can then save them as presets so you don't have to refigure this stuff out later. And let's say I get this all dialed in the way that I want it. I can select the next several photos, Command Shift S on a Mac or Control Shift S on a PC, Synchronize Settings. This will take whatever settings I have on my selected photo and apply it to every other photo behind it that I have selected. However, let's say I've selected all five of these images and I am currently on the middle one. Whatever settings this photo has will apply to 51 and 52, but it doesn't go backwards in the line. So make sure you're always on the first one so that it applies to everything after it. Okay, so we've got this one. It's cropped, color corrected. The other thing that I like to do with my images is add a vignette which if we go down to the bottom here, I just scroll about there. Let me show you the before and after on this. It's subtle, but what it does is it darkens the corners and brings our focus into the center of the image. Because if you've watched me do any critique videos, our eyeballs view the brightest, the most contrast, and the sharpest focused in the image. So by darkening the edges a little bit, it automatically makes the middle of the frame the brightest, Therefore, that's where our eyes go. And we want our subjects looking here, not out in the corners of the frame. You can absolutely go too much and make it look like, you know, it's a pinhole camera. And don't go with the white ones. These are like the outdated Western photos you can take at the fair. Cool in that scenario, but it's like the mullet and stonewashed jeans of editing. You might as well do selective color at that point which if you're not familiar with that is, it's when like you make the whole image black and white except the red and you jack the red up or the blue or whatever. Don't do that. Anyway, uh, normally I save this for the end because again, I am gonna do editing around the frame and it's much easier to do without the vignette in there, but that is part of my process at the end. Okay, so we've cropped, we've done color and it was very simple in this one. Uh, right, all I really had to do was warm up the image just a touch. But color correction for me might also mean adjusting the shadows, the blacks, a little bit of contrast if I wanted to do that. Yeah, but a little contrast, too much. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we've gone from here to here. It's subtle, but it's just a little bit of pop, and I'm cool with that. Okay, so we've cropped, we've done color. The next one is correct. And by correct, I mean perform surgery. Remove all the things that we don't want in the photos. There's a few things that I do for all of my work. One, edit in Imagenomics portraiture. I know there's already a magic wand in Photoshop, but to me, this is the magic wand of editing. So what it's gonna do is duplicate the file into a TIFF because it can't work in a raw file. It has to be raster or it has to be uh, one of these supported image formats. And then here is a preview of what the image is going to look like. You can see how much it smooths everything. That's a lot. I'm gonna dial it back to just normal and you can save your own presets in here based on what your style is and what you require. Now with my boudoir editing, because I add so much clarity after the fact, I need to over smooth it 
knowing that I'm going to bring back that detail later. But this is the thing that I worked out through trial and error. If you're not adding a bunch of clarity back into your images, you probably don't need to do that. So just play around with what looks right for you. This is all trial and error. And this looks really good right here. And what I'm looking for is poor detail. I want to see all of this texture in her face. I don't want it to totally disappear. Another thing that you can do with portraiture, which I really love, is skin mask. So I'm going to turn that on. And you can select the skin tone values here. You can also use the color dropper and select skin for different um, for clients who have different skin tones. And it will automatically process everything with those color values and ignore everything else. So notice here how I'm, when I click on it, it gives me before and after for her skin, right? Off, on, off, on. But look at the background. That doesn't change at all. Off, on. However, if I turn off that mask, now the background gets processed also. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't, but you've got the option. You can also turn on auto mask, which will automatically view the image and select the skin tones that it thinks you want to process. Now notice it's also processing the boots if you know, and the floor a little bit because they're all similar color values. So you got to play around with that. You can also do two different images and then layer them on top of each other. Use a mask in Photoshop to just mask off the things that you don't want to be processed. But I would rather just auto skin mask everything, let it make the decisions. I don't care if the floor gets smoothed out a little bit or the boots. Uh, I don't think she will either. Okay, then we hit okay. Takes a second to run. You can also do this on batches. So what I do is I will call a shoot down to about 75 to 100 images, select all of them, run portraiture on everything. It takes about 20, 30 minutes to run. I can go get a sandwich, do whatever, come back, and then all of the images will have been processed in that time. So next, I wanna get rid of these things in the photo that don't add to the image. So I'm gonna open this original file in Photoshop. So I wanna extend the background over here so we don't have the edge of my, my backdrop. Same thing on this side, and I wanna get rid of that light. Plus, I don't like this highlight on the floor. So a couple things you can do. Easy place to start, select the space, and again, uh, make sure it's your background layer, and it must be a rasterized layer. It cannot be a smart layer. You can just control click or left click on here and do content aware fill. You know, choose from the backdrop, the floor. I don't want any of this considered for the fill. So the green areas here is where it's drawing its data. On this side, it's showing what it's actually going to look like. This is the preview, which I think looks pretty great. So let's apply that. And boom, just like that, it got rid of all of that. Let's try it over here. You can also clone stamp. There's a ton of different ways you can do this. This is the fastest and easiest. So notice our preview over here has nothing in the middle of the frame. That's because I was still on the new layer that we just added. Go to the actual background layer. Now let's try this. Okay, again, I don't want it to select her for any of that data. Wait for the preview to update. Do this. And the hand down here. It doesn't have to be perfect. But now we're gonna look over here. That looks pretty close. Uh, no, I definitely want that. Okay, and we'll apply it. Now notice you can see the floor coming up over here, which we don't want. So what I can also do is just grab that same marquee 
free transform, and I'm gonna drag the background out of there. So I'm moving those pixels. Then I can take my clone stamp, which I'm gonna flatten this image so it's all back to one layer, and I'm gonna clone that stripe back across the floor. The stripe doesn't really bother me. Yes, I should have folded the thing down a little bit. I could go in and remove it if I wanted to. I don't really want to. Okay, and lastly is this little guy. Let's see if we can't also use content aware fill for that. Um, let's see. So your default mouse, you see there's a little minus symbol in the middle of that circle. That means anything I click will not be selected anymore but I can hold down the Option key or the Alt key on a PC to select more area to get more data. And you can see it's not perfect. I'm not feeling that at all. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna use my clone stamp. Give myself some room to work with. Oh, that is, make sure I have a good soft brush. There we go. Pretty good. Okay. Now you might look at the floor and know that I've done something. The pattern looks a little bit off, but I guarantee you if someone didn't see the original version, they would never have guessed. And if we go over here, you can see little artifacts in the floor. That was from the content aware fill. So I'm gonna get rid of those too. So you can see what I'm doing is selecting an area, moving the mouse over, and you can see where that little plus sign is. That's where it's sampling from. And I'm just using parts of the floor to cover up other parts of the floor. All right. I think that looks pretty darn Good. Last thing I'm going to do is fix where her shirt is bunching. You don't need to hit the volume key. That was a mistake. <laughs> All right. I don't like to make people skinny. I don't slim people down. But where their shirts are bunching, this is something that I will go in and smooth. I don't want it to be a totally smooth line because that's just not what clothes and bodies do. I mean, this is a bodysuit. If she was standing, that'd be a different story, but I'm just gonna use this liquify tool and bump this back in. Sometimes pushing out is also the answer. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then right here where her traps are engaged, I'm gonna bump that in just a little bit. Perfect. All right, let's save this. <clears throat> and it's gonna automatically put us back into Lightroom. It's gonna reload, cool. So let's check out, where's our original one? Our original one here. Let's pull these up side by side. There we go. Okay, so here we have the original on the right and the other one and the, the done one on the left. So we got rid of the distractions that didn't need to be part of the frame, got rid of that. We did the skin smoothing. You can see we smoothed out the folds and bulges in her, her clothes here just to smooth that line a little bit. Um, night and day. The last thing that I'm gonna do, like I mentioned before, is throw that vignette on. Right, way too much. I think that looks pretty good there. All right, so we cropped first to get the horizons level and to make sure that she had right amount of space around her. We color corrected. I warmed it up a little bit, played with the shadows, the contrast, uh, and then I corrected, which is performing surgery. That's when I remove all the things that I don't need in the photo that detract from the final result that I have in my mind. The last thing, step four, which should really be step one is clean your screen. I cannot tell you how many times, uh, and every professional photographer will tell you this, we've sat there in Photoshop cloning something out on the screen that just won't go away, only to find out 
it was like a thumbprint or just a water spot, something on our actual computer screen that we thought was part of the photo. Every retoucher, every photographer can tell you they've done that at least one time. And it's one of those like you do it once and then next time you can't clone something out, you're like, cool, I'm on the right layer, my screen's dirty. Especially if you have a laptop and you're traveling with your computer, it can happen all the time. So clean your screen because that is going to make a world of difference with editing your images. So there you go. And then crop, color, and correct. And you will have stunning images no matter what you start with. So I have other great videos on editing. Uh, also in the Boudoir Guild, I have a really thorough course on how I do all of my beauty editing in my boudoir photos. We cover everything from you know the content aware fill like I just showed you with some more advanced techniques, more advanced clone stamping where I really walk you through step by step. We do frequency separation in there as well as how to call how I use Lightroom, my file structure, how to really speed up your workflow so that you can go and edit 100 images in 40 minutes and do same day reveals with your clients because that's how I had to get good and fast with all of this I did same day reveals and I showed edited photos so in under an hour uh, I could edit the whole batch of images and you can do it too so you're not spending all of your nights and weekends and possible free time toiling away doing tedious editing you are amazing we'll see you inside